Hello, my name is Brendan. This is All Music is Folk Music. This is another video in my Patch a Day series where I'll make a, dof a different patch every day on the Arturia Micro Freak and release them all for download at the end of the month. Um, I had started my video and then a big truck came by and parked outside my house for a while, made a lot of sound. So I'm just going to restart the video. Um, I'm going to sort of build off the same idea that I had going, but I'm going to start it from scratch. Um, it'll be 13. Uh, on our little table here, which corresponds to the noise oscillator. So I'm going to start from an initialized patch and just rebuild back to where I was. Um, so let's start by going to the noise oscillator in here. which I think lends itself um, very well to a couple different types of sounds. I've made some really nice keys with this before, but I think I'm going to go into making um, sort of a generative percussive sound that changes each time that we trigger it, um, because I think that'd be an interesting workflow that I haven't talked a ton about before. So let's get started. Um, for now, I'm going to focus on just the noise. So I'm going to bring down sort of the harmonic aspect of this. I'll dial it back in later, but I sort of just want to focus in on the noise part for right now. Um, so the way the noise uh, oscillator works is that there are different types of noise, ranging from sort of metallic to sort of white noise to almost like a diffused sort of crackle, which if you bring very low, has like a vinyl crackle quality to it, which can be uh, a really interesting texture uh, on a lot of stuff. Um, I'm gonna go about... here to start with, um, and I'm gonna get our envelope set up. So if we want a percussive sound, it's gotta have a pretty immediate attack. Um, no sustain, you can't really sustain a percussive element, and fairly short decay and release. Let's start around... 333. So already it has sort of a classic um, 8-bit sort of, or almost 808 style, um, little like clap or snare sound. Um, one thing I'm noticing is that as I play different notes, um, it sounds exactly the same no matter which key I'm pressing. So I'd like to get some key tracking going. Um, and what changes the uh, sort of rate, uh, they call it here, which we can also think a bit of as pitch. Is this middle knob, the timber knob. So let's go down to our matrix, and we'll map the timbre to the key tracker. Let's get it going around, I don't know, 35. Maybe even more, let's say um, 45. All right, that's a pretty good starting place. I might go back and fine tune that later. Um, now, I was mentioning earlier that I'd like for this to be a somewhat uh, generative or randomized patch uh, so that every time that we trigger it, a bit of a different sound is created, uh, maybe within uh, a certain set parameter. So it still sounds sort of cohesive, but there's movement and rhythm within the patch itself. So a great way to do this uh, is by going to the sample and hold LFO. So let's move our shape table down to sample and hold, which is the fifth in the row. Uh, I'm going to turn the rate to LFO sync off, and I'm going to slow this down as much as I can, which on the Micro Freak is 0 0.06 hertz. We're going to go to our utility menu, go to the preset menu in that, and we're just going to go ahead and turn LFO retrig on. So that now, every time that we trigger a note, basically a new randomized um, value is selected, and it is held pretty much for the duration of the sound. Um, so that'll give us some options to randomize different parameters. Right off the bat, we can think about what it is that we might want to randomize. Um, I think one great option might be the wave. So we get sort of a mix between <clears throat> sort of that snare clap sound and a bit of a hi-hat or um, 
just random metallic percussion sound. So let's go ahead and set this to, let's go to the LFO and wave on the matrix. Uh, let's set it arbitrarily to around 25 to start. And I'll just get an ARP going, maybe at, um, I don't know, eighth note, and we'll hear what that sounds like. I'm going to maybe increase that a little bit to, let's say, around 30. Uh, and I think now I'd like to also go ahead and get the decay uh, changing as well. Um, so I'm going to set the decay fairly short to start here. And I'm going to have it also mapped to uh, change with that sample and hold LFO. So I'm going to set a new assignable knob. Uh, I'm going to maybe pick this middle one here. Let's go ahead and twist the decay knob to make that connection. Great. And let's go LFO to assignable knob 2. And let's also set that to around 20% to start. And one interesting thing that you might notice is that um, there is sort of an inherent uh, logic, I guess, to this patch, uh, where because the sample and hold, that same value is controlling both sort of what the overall character of the sound is, you know, whether it's that sort of noisy snare sound or a bit more of a metallic clang, um, that same value is also controlling the decay. So when this moves up into the metallic section of the wave um, knob, it also increases the decay so that the more metallic sounds will always be held for longer. And we can consider if that's, you know, quite how we want to do this. Um, we might want to do the inverse. So we might want to go ahead and maybe, you know, start the wavetable kind of higher, or not the wavetable, the wave knob. Um, and then maybe make that a negative connection. And so now it's going to be the case that the metallic sounds are shorter and the sort of snare sounds have a bit more ring to them. Which I think is, is interesting and I, I might actually stick with that for now. Um, I, I think it could be a cool... Um, you know, you're noticing that there's already sort of rhythms emerging in different types of emphasis. So now the metallic sound has almost more of a clave um, sort of vibe to it, which I like. Um, and now that we have this sort of snare sound uh, going, maybe we can also add back in that melodic aspect of just a sine wave. Um, and I, I think I don't want it to necessarily just be that one steady note. I think I would like to have a bit of um, sort of a pitch. You know, it starts higher and then it, just like a real percussive instrument would, it sort of drops down pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to map the pitch to the envelope. Oh, no. The pitch to the envelope. Uh, let's say it's maybe like 25. That's a bit cheesy as it is now. Let's maybe uh, reconsider that amount. Mm, you know what? I think maybe this is a good time to use um, the cycling envelope instead and just have a separate envelope that isn't um, as controlled by like the decay of the envelope overall, but is sort of just a set um, set length. So let's go ahead and set our cycling envelope to uh, envelope mode. Um, and we'll just get a pretty quick little fall time on that. That's just consistent. It's going to be static and the same every time that we trigger it. So let's hear what that sounds like if we map the cycling envelope to pitch. Maybe I'll just start from a, a lower bass note.
Nice. And I think I'd also like to go ahead and have um, this mapped to the LFO as well. So that, um, again, when the uh, random value is higher, so when it's going to be more snare-like, and when there's going to be longer decay, we will also have more of that sine wave in there. So let's go ahead and say 20 to start. Hear what that sounds like. I think it needs some more. And I'm also feeling like um, that decay at its longest is being held for a bit too long. So I'm just going to go ahead and knock that down a little bit to, let's say, 16. Hear what that sounds like. Uh, and finally, we can maybe consider adding in the cutoff filter. Um, see if that really uh, helps us give some definition to this sound. Mm, I ultimately don't feel like that's super necessary for this. But maybe what we can do is we can have, um, it might be interesting to sort of just get a bit of resonance here to add a bit of character. And maybe that can be uh, just key tracked. So let's hear what this sounds like maybe if we increase that to a 16th division on the ARP and we'll add some spice in there to get a bit more of an interesting rhythm going. And maybe bring that up to three octaves range. I think it's an interesting patch. Um, it might be a cool sort of layer to have, um, you know, just right on top of, say, a kick or something. Um, it's sort of got a very interesting cadence to it. You know, I, I think this might be something where I would play it for a little while and then just cut out, you know, my favorite part um, and maybe loop that. I think it's cool that you can get all sorts of different um, generative sort of emphases and rhythms um, just from this pretty basic setup. You know, I think it's it's a good sort of um, starting point uh, to add stuff on top of. Maybe not necessarily something that would function as a patch that goes through the length of a song on its own, but I think you could definitely tweak these parameters as well and sort of treat this as a jumping off point uh, for just, you know, kickstarting, um, you know, uh, your creativity on coming up with a rhythm for a song, things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Percussion. And I'm just going to go with hit. <laughs> I'm feeling lazy with my names today. And there we have it. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you again tomorrow.